please, don't shoot. I'm not armed. My God, there's a wild animal on the loose. You could have been killed. Well, then it seems that I owe you my life. Just go. Get out of here fast. Certainly. Thank you, officer. It's a dead end. There's no way out. Dr. Jonathan Chase. Wealthy, young, handsome. A man with the brightest of futures. A man with the darkest of pasts. From Africa's deepest recesses to the rarefied peaks of Tibet. Heir to his father's legacy and the world's darkest mysteries. My son, you must have faith and learn. This is not the end. This is the beginning. Jonathan Chase, master of the secrets that divide man from animal, animal from man. Partnered with a young police detective and a former army corporal from the fields of Vietnam, a trio that stands against the crime that breeds in the concrete jungles and stretches its deadly tentacles to the fascinating but dangerous world beyond. The world of Manable. You know that I know. I think I'll follow his next move. How can he follow that limo without a car? You bought him some weird dates, JC. But this one, she went first class. Please, I, I'm a poor merchant. I love you liberated women of the 80s. Oh, a big cat. Criminal mind is your special. Someone's cat got into my It was hip to dump on the 1980s at one point. There were a lot of things going on back then that looked pretty friggin' strange now. Fashion, music, hairstyles, trends, games, movies, and of course, awesome television. It's still viewed as a wacky decade, but now there's a bit more of a nostalgic edge to it by those who lived through it and it's starting to look a bit more fun by the ones who missed it. There must be something to it, considering how all these movies and TV shows from the 80s are being reintroduced today. I think this respect the 80s has gained through the years has a bit to do with this 20-year cycle that happens with decades. After 20 years, decades seem to get reevaluated. The generation that enjoyed living through them begin to miss those times when they were younger. They get a bit more vocal about their love for the stuff they grew up with. A lot of that stuff gets more appreciated. The decade is looked at in a fresher perspective, and pretty soon that once maligned decade holds cherished memories, and it becomes categorized as being the good old days. It looks like that's starting to happen now with the 1990s. A couple years ago, the Spice Girls were considered a joke. Now they're one of the highlights of the Olympics. How did that happen? One of the biggest things from the 80s that left a lasting mark was television. Remember, back then there weren't thousands of channels. Cable television was just starting out, and everyone was pretty much watching the same three channels. You couldn't avoid it. We were all in the same boat. There was still a sense of community with television. It was likely the next day a lot of people watched the same thing you were watching last night. I think that's pretty rare nowadays. 
The 80s were filled with tons of high concept shows. Some were popular, and some were like, manimal. Dr. Jonathan Chase is a British college professor at the New York University Police Science Department. All the chicks love him. Or you will simply spend an entire semester listening to me being very dull. Be dull of my place any time. Thank you, Mr. Thatcher. Between teaching his students the value of the use of animals in police work, he works with Detective Brooke McKenzie and his pal Ty Earl to use his mysterious shape-shifting powers to transform into actual animals, and they solve crimes together. Told you it was a high-concept show. The 90-minute pilot sets up the story with Detective Brooke and Jonathan changing into animals and stopping bad guys. It's not really that complicated. The actual bad guys and what they're doing, I, I don't really care. It seemed like a lot of these shows, the bad guys and what their plans were, always kind of were interchangeable. They just bounce around from program to program, hassling different television heroes. It was always the same kidnapping plot or protecting a witness, finding something that was stolen, extortion. The stories never really mattered much to me. Whatever the bad guys were up to, the real fun was seeing how each unique television hero would win in the end. The bad guys in the Manimal pilot, they're hijacking nerve gas or something. The only thing that stood out to me about them is that Terry Kaiser is a bad guy, and they have Ursula Andress as the head of the bad guys. And she doesn't really do much of anything in this, by the way. Detective Brooke McKenzie, who's played by Melody Anderson from Flash Gordon, is trying to stop these hijackers. Her partner gets killed, and she has a run-in with a panther at the scene of the crime. She meets Simon McCorkendale's Dr. Jonathan Chase, and they team up to stop these hijackers. Miss McKenzie, I'd like to come along. You're a consultant, not a police officer. Oh, I think I could be quite helpful this my that. Soon, when Jonathan is out of sight, animals start popping up during the investigation. Brooke puts it all together and learns what Jonathan's powers are. You know that I know that you can... That I can turn into all manner of wild beasts in the still of the night. Well... And you want to tell the world about it. Yes. 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 Along with Jonathan's partner, Ty, Brooke and Jonathan stop the bad guys and thus begins their partnership and their shared secret of Jonathan's shape-shifting powers that will help them stop criminals every week or at least eight weeks. Manimal didn't catch on, and it only lasted for eight episodes. And for good reason. It's pretty bad. This trio of Jonathan, Brooke, and Ty, who was played by Glenn Turman in the pilot, and in the later episodes he was replaced by Michael D. Roberts, uh, these three aren't the most interesting batch of characters to watch. They don't have much personality or fun chemistry happening between them. They're usually just standing around spouting out expository dialogue about the plot that we really don't care about. These three seem to have the potential to be likable together, but they're just so dull. You would think there would be some kind of budding romance or sexual tension between Jonathan and Brooke. This would be the building up of anticipation making us look forward and hope for the episode where they would hook up. But there's really nothing like that between them. There's a few small teases, but really it doesn't amount to much. Maybe if the show stuck around long enough, they would have gotten to it. Ty is meant to give some comedy relief. He's usually the one who, after the case is solved, is seen doing something funny. And the camera cuts back to Jonathan and Brooke and Maybe some of the guest stars laughing. Freeze frame and cue the credits. I was never amused by anything he did, though. Jonathan's manimal ability is never really explored. It was somehow passed down to him from his father from some kind of mysterious African technique or something. My father, an adventurer, a world traveler, a man of unbounded imagination, like to dabble quite frequently 
fiction. Uh-uh. It won't work, Professor. I told you, I know. I just don't know how. Ha. Huh. Therein lies the problem. Knowing something and proving it are two entirely different things. I would imagine if Manimal was made today, there would be a lot more exploration into the background and a history to this. Maybe open it up to a whole Manimal cult of bad guys that would become Jonathan's nemesis and he would constantly do battle with. Here we just get the opening narration of how he got his powers. Again, maybe if the series lasted longer they would have created more of a Manimal history. The big hook of the show, the angle that is meant to set it apart from the crop, is the whole Jonathan can change into animals. But it really doesn't yield too much of payoffs. There's really two main animals he morphs into. A panther and a hawk. Nearly every episode we see these things and it doesn't get any more exciting than after the first time we see him. So, how'd it go? I was a real pussycat. Jonathan usually ends up using these animal alter egos to eavesdrop on the bad guys or chase them. At times it seems pretty pointless. For the amount of time it takes for him to transform, the criminal might be miles away already. These bad guys are really stupid too. They see this panther growling at them and they always freeze in terror and then they get arrested. They don't even start shooting at it, which is what I would do. I'd just start unloading at them. But they just drop their guns and scream and... and nonsense. I got gotcha. you. Oh. Jonathan changes into a few other animals during the eight episodes, but nothing really noteworthy, or ones that create any fun scenes. I know this was a weekly television show, and they didn't have much of a budget for a lot of animal stuff. There was probably real limitations of what they could do, but I think they could have gotten a bit more creative and fun with them when they happened. Plus, if the rest of the show was better and kept me entertained just watching the interaction of the three main characters working together, I wouldn't be so impatient to finally see some disappointing manimal action. But how I did it, you'll never find out. <laughs> Sorry, Felix. Once we had that claw, it wasn't so tough. There's a great piece of evidence. Your fingerprints are probably all over it. Nobody will ever see it. The transformation scenes were done by Stan Winston. And they've gotten a lot of flack, but really, for the time it was made and the fact this was a television show, I didn't think they looked all that bad, really. They use a lot of the same techniques that were used in An American Werewolf in London. Some of them are pretty decent. His ears expanding aren't bad. They didn't try to hide it with shadows, though, and I guess that doesn't help. And for some reason, they cut to these really bad shots of puppet paws spouting claws, and it really ruins the whole thing. Throughout the course of the episodes, they reuse the same transformation shots again and again, which is understandable, you know, save money. But they don't get any more dazzling the second time you see them. They wear out their welcome. I never understood what's supposed to happen with Jonathan's clothes, either. They rip off when he transforms, but... Then when he changes back, he's just back wearing them. There isn't any kind of Hulk thing with the torn clothes. They don't even try to work out some kind of explanation as to why Jonathan isn't naked after becoming a snake. It's just like, okay, transformation's over. Now let's get back to the human stuff. Come on, go grab him. What are you waiting for? Don't you remember I, I hate snakes? Jonathan, why couldn't you become something else? Rewatching the scene, it really started to remind me of a more recent scene in a big film. Grab the snake! I'm calling it that! It's a snake, what do you want me to call it? Actually, I think the Manimal scene is more exciting. Manimal was produced by super producer Glenn Larson, who was responsible for a lot of popular shows during this time. I think he actually came on to Manimal after NBC came up with this idea. 
It's been categorized as one of the worst television shows of all time. Granted, it's pretty bad, but I don't think I would call it the worst, though. It was a fun enough premise, and I can picture it being something of a goofy, fun, cheesy show with the right presentation. But as it is, I think it's just boring. There's supposedly a manimal, big-budget film being planned. I'm not sure who the audience is that it's meant for. Other than some devoted fans who like it, most people who watched it back then hated it. Other people probably vaguely recall watching it. Younger people probably never heard of it, and it will just sound ridiculous to. I'm sure they would polish up the transformations with CGI. They'd be able to do some cooler animal action. But I don't know how good of an idea it is to make a film based on a show that's become a punchline with most people. If I want some fun animal action from the early 80s, I'd rather watch Beastmaster. Transmutation. Changing from one life form to another. If a man could do that, some might call it a very great gift. Or a curse. 